Today we start by transferring the four holes of the flange to the base plate. The base plate is also made of PVC and has a side length of 200 mm each and a thickness of 12 mm. On the bottom of the base plate, I countersank the holes so that the stainless steel M6, 80mm flathead screws I will use are flush with the bottom of the base plate. I simply used a 12mm drill for this purpose. A thread locker is used to prevent the stainless steel nuts from loosening again after tightening. The next step is to make the suction connection for the chamber. That requires this brass hose nozzle with a 1 quarter inch male thread. Since we only need the hose nozzle, it is cut off with a hacksaw. The cutting edge of the hose nozzle is smoothed with the drill press and sandpaper. Using a mini tube bender, a 200 mm long brass tube with an outer diameter of 5 mm and an inner diameter of 4 mm is bent. The brass tube was then heated at the bending point and bent to exactly 90 degrees. I use a mini pipe cutter to cut the bent brass tube to length. A piece of brass tube with an outer diameter of 6 mm and an inner diameter of 5 mm serves as a solder sleeve. The three parts of the suction connection were then soldered together using soft solder. Now the anode is made of a 1mm thick brass sheet with a diameter of 70mm. We need the ring electrode and the plate anode to build up an electrostatic field with a voltage of about 1000 volts. It is used to draw cloud tracks down to the sensitive region of the chamber and also serves to increase the sensitivity of the chamber. Later, we will also attach the radioactive source to the anode. To cut out the disc a fret saw with a fine metal saw blade is recommended. A 6mm hole is drilled in the center of the brass disc. 
The second hole off center has a diameter of 3 mm. To sand the brass disc into a nice round shape, we use the same technique as for the two flange parts. Using my hot air soldering station, I soldered an M3 brass insert nut to the brass disc. The nut is kept in place during soldering by an M3 stainless steel screw. It is important not to use a brass or galvanized screw. These would bond with the soft solder. The M3 insert nut is later used to mount various objects in front of the radioactive source. Now it's time to work on the base plate again. I screwed in another 4 M6 stainless steel nuts and fixed them with a thread locker. The distance from the top edge of the nut to the end of the screw should be 26 mm. After the lower flange is positioned, the location of the hole for the suction connection is marked. After drilling the hole for the suction connection, it is inserted and marked where it is to be cut. Now the suction tube is glued in place. Again, slow curing two component epoxy resin is used for this purpose. The flange should be slightly roughened at the bonding point. Once the flange is positioned on the base plate again, the suction tube is aligned. This is an ionization chamber for smoke detectors. You can buy it on eBay. It contains the americium isotope 241, which is a strong alpha emitter and a weak gamma emitter with a half-life of 432 years. We will use it as a radioactive source for our cloud chamber. Before we open the ionization chamber, an urgent warning, never touch the radioactive material with bare hands. Alpha radiation outside the body is harmless, but inside the body, it can cause great harm. On this side, the americium isotope can be seen in the center. Here the alpha radiation escapes. On the back side, there is a small metal disc. It prevents alpha radiation from escaping on the back. By the way, alpha radiation is already blocked by a piece of paper. We must now solder the radioactive source to the plate electrode. I did this off camera because you have to be very careful when soldering. The americium isotope must not get too hot under any circumstances. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.